Hey, this is Karen, Coach's Corner Chats, and on the chat with me tonight is Mauricio Lozado. Mauricio, where are you at, and what are you up to? Uh, I am in uh, the Twin Cities, uh, Minnesota. Um, I'm the boys' uh, 11 to 14 uh, director at Tonka United and assistant men's uh, soccer coach at Bethany Lutheran in Mankato. Um, Bethany Lutheran, so what are we talking about? D1, D2, D3? Uh, so we're part of the UMAC uh, D3. And, and what's, is it boys, girls? Uh, and the men's, and the men's side. And how long have you been there at Bethany? Uh, this would, this fall will be my second, second season at it. What was, what was, what's been your experience being an assistant coach? Um, you know, it's, it's been good. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty lucky to be part of a, a really, really good program. So, um, I'm really just learning, um, how to, you know, talk to, uh, 18 to 23, 24 year olds sometimes, um, and, and coaching them and leading them and, um, and, and, you know, that performance piece at, at a higher level, um, and, and just helping them achieve the goals that, that we have. So, uh, it's been, it's been a, a lot of fun and, and obviously working with two, um, our head coach, our associate head coach, working with them and learning from them on, on how to lead a, uh, successful soccer program uh, has been, has been a lot of, a lot of fun to, to be a part of. What, what uh, brought you or kind of pulled you toward that program in the first place? Uh, well, I, so the associate uh, coach at, the, uh, at Bethany, he and I were together at the same club a couple years back. Um, and at the time I was getting done with Sinov uh, in, in the Maya D3. So we just always kind of had that conversation about the college side. And, and when the opportunity came, uh, I reached out. I was telling them, hey, I'm coming back to Minnesota and, and I'm, you know, going to be doing this youth side uh, role. But, but at the same time, um, for me, the college game has been something that I always want to be a part of. So um, they gave me a shot. And, and again, last year, it was, it was so much fun. And they're having me back. So <laughs> I'm excited for, for round two. That's awesome. That's awesome. You, you mentioned going back to Minnesota. So did you grow up in Minnesota or how does Minnesota work in that equation? Yeah, no, I, I, I grew up in Minnesota, uh, North of Minnesota. It's about 45 minutes south of the Twin Cities. Um, and the last uh, two years or so, I was in Colorado. I went out there for a uh, soccer job and, um, and, you know, it was a lot of fun, but, but, a pandemic hit and you know you realize that that yes um it, it was it was it was a lot of fun to be out there but i wanted to be closer uh closer to home closer to family uh my wife kept her job here in here in minnesota um so it just made sense to come back um and and again we I, coming back to to two great opportunities uh made 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 that so easy <laughs> of, a, of a decision what's the what's the soccer landscape in minnesota because when i think minnesota i'm thinking really really cold and lots of snow so what's what is the landscape of soccer there uh well i mean i think depending on who you ask um you know the twin cities uh soccer landscape is pretty strong uh we have you know a couple of uh clubs we technically have our own league <laughs> twin city soccer league um, uh, so, uh, you know, the, it is a 10 month program for most of us. So, you know, we have, uh, indoor facilities, uh, domes, uh, gyms, all that kind of stuff in the winter months. Um, and then outside of the twin cities is more rural, but, um, you know, uh, clubs just kind of figure out, um, you know, the, the investments that they want to make to, to make sure that. Uh, they do right by by their youth, and uh, and in the last couple of years uh, have produced pretty good pretty good uh, players. Uh, and and the other thing that does help now is that we we do have a Division One men's program with the University of Saint Thomas. Uh, we have a very very strong Division One program with the with the Gophers uh, on the women's side, and then 
Division Three Mayak is pretty strong on both sides, uh, men's and women's soccer. And then the UMAC, uh, I would say probably the, the men's is a little bit stronger, but uh, the women's uh, teams in the last couple of years, you know, DW Superior and such have, have done fantastic things. So, um, and obviously Division Two women's uh, conference is pretty strong. So uh, we, we have the talent uh, and, and obviously uh, we, we tend to, get out of state <laughs> during the winter months to, to, to get that competition. So um, we make it work. It's It was snowing a little bit earlier today, but, but we make it work. Now, as you were growing up and playing, um, did you have, at what point did you say, you know, I think coaching's the way that I want to go? Because you don't seem like you're, like, how old are you right now? Uh, just, well, 31. 31. 31. Um, so young, early in your coach. I mean, for me, he was like in my 40s. So at what point did you decide, was it a high school experience that you said, you know, I want to go into coaching and, and what, what kind of put you on this path that you're on now? Yeah, no. Um, well, our high school coach, uh, um, you know, came to us uh, as varsity players and, and we're like, hey, we, we need to give back to the community. So uh, part of our, part of the varsity program was that we needed to um, coach the rec in-house uh, teams. So, um, you know, we would go and be assistant coaches and, and you know, at the time we're, we're soccer players that, that were amazing. So, <laughs> so really our thing was just, you know, kind of giving the little ones a, an idea what, what they could look like uh, as soccer players, but also just, you know, uh, young uh, young people uh, as, as they grew up right so um, so that really was how I started coaching and then during college it was my summer job to to coach in, in the Norfolk Soccer Association where I played uh, as youth and and you know uh, throughout my high school time uh, but when I when I made it more of a professional side uh, was when I was given the opportunity to be the assistant at Sinov and uh, uh, Sinov College, uh, which is in Northfield, um, and that's when I was like, "Yeah, I want this. I, I wanna. I, I want soccer to be my 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 profession. Um, you know, getting paid to be around soccer fields and and kicking soccer balls and, and that kind of stuff. I mean, it was a no brainer. Um, at the time, my, my real job was insurance. So <laughs> um, I figured out that I didn't want to be in the office. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, that around that time, I, I moved to coaching in the Twin Cities. And that's where, uh, you know, coaching licenses came in and, and getting more involved. And, and, uh, and since then, I haven't looked back. Um, you know, once I got my, my full time uh, club coaching uh, role, uh, it's it's been a roller coaster, but it's also been a, a lot of fun to to grow into this this profession. What was it like to kind of say, like you just said, that insurance thing just didn't fit your personality, what you wanted? Was it scary to kind of say, I'm going to give that up and just go all in with the soccer? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, I think I would have been 24, 25, 26 around that time, and and I'm like. Yeah, I want I want soccer. I I did tell myself and, and my wife, uh, thirty five. I'm, I'm gonna give myself to thirty five. The thirty five, I either am a head coach at the college camp or I am a director of coaching at a club. Um, so if that doesn't happen, then you know I have a bachelor's in social work. <laughs> I can go back to that. Um, I have a pretty good experience in in insurance. Um, and then who knows, maybe, maybe some, something else comes up, but, but I really, uh, that, that was kind of my timeline, you know, at 35, I, I, I gotta figure it out. I gotta make sure that I, and at 31 now, I, I, you know, the age group director and, and assist another college game. So, so we're doing okay. Uh, we still have a couple of years to, to see, see how this, you know, pays out. <laughs> 
So what was it? So once you make the decision, what were some of the things, what did you say to yourself for me to get the ball rolling? So if there's other young coaches similar to you as like, this is what I'd love to go pursue. What were some of the things that you were like, okay, I need to go do, like you mentioned some licensing courses. How did you go about kind of getting involved in the coaching side of things? Um, you know, I, I really was reaching out to other coaches um, and especially um, at the time, the, the, those coaches that, you know, I either saw from my D license or I coached against. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, my director of coaching at the time, I really was like, Hey, what do I need to be doing? What, you know, how can I get to where I want to get, get to? Um, and, and it was really just relationships, you know, building those relationships and, and, and kind of, kind of, you know, putting those heats on the ground of like, okay, this is, this is where I want to go. And this is how I want, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, can, can I get some advice? And, and obviously there was a lot of emails and there was a lot of calls that weren't, you know, responded to. I, I get it. People are busy, but, but those that did, you know, respond and, 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 and just share their experience and, and their feedback. Um, you know, this is, this is where I'm, this is why I'm here. <laughs> um, because it, they kind of more honest. We're honest that it takes time, and it and and you kind of pay your dues. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I I don't see doing something different <laughs> at, at least at this time. Um, then I got obviously more involved with United Soccer Coaches, um, and and you know, just meeting coaches not only from the Twin Cities but now across the country and, and some overseas and that kind of stuff and and again just building those relationships getting that coaching network bigger and bigger um has helped uh you know open open some doors and 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 not just professionally but also personal sometimes right of like i can call one of my one of my soccer buddies and just talk about anything else <laughs> uh and 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 you know because at the end of the day we're also human so uh, in, in order for us to, to do the soccer, we, we got to make sure that we take care of other things like, you know, ma marriage and owning a home and all that kind of stuff. So um, why not? Why not ask them for, for some advice from from those that have done it? You mentioned the United Soccer Coaches. You have kind of taken on a, a little bit of a bigger role with that. What is it that you're doing with United Soccer Coaches and like, how do how do you go from being a person that attends the convention to one that um, maybe presents or helps put together some things for it? Yeah. Um, so my first convention was the one in Chicago. So at the time, um, again, I was just like, it's you know, Twin Cities, Chicago. Yeah, six, seven hour, eight hour drive. I don't even remember. I, I gotta go do it. Right. I gotta go experience it because um, how I got how I knew about United Soccer Coaches was the, our club at the time uh, gave us those uh, free memberships, uh, you know, three months, six months free membership of go get uh, coaching ideas and, and training sessions and that kind of stuff. And so I kind of knew about them. And then I went to the convention and I did everything. I went to every session and we, uh, you know, spoke to, I don't even know how many people. I was exhausted when I came back home because I, you know, I lost my voice, all that kind of stuff. But it, but it was a great experience, and and again, it opened that opportunities to, you know, to what's next. I, I actually met the person that hired me uh, to go to Colorado at the Chicago convention. So, um, so I, you know, again, I, it was kind of like this is what I wanted, and I want to go to every convention every year. Uh, from there, I I reached out to the Latino Advocacy Group. Um, the leadership band and, and I was like hey I don't have a lot to offer but I do have time and 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 I'm excited right and then let me know how I can help and from there I started becoming a, a leader in, in, within the group uh, you know being in charge of a couple of different uh, projects and um, the, I think it was August of last year, I was uh, given the opportunity to, to be the chair for the Latino Advocacy Group. 
Um, and, you know, these last couple of months has been about uh, making sure that our Latina coaches, Latina coaches uh, have a voice within the organization, within the landscape of uh, just soccer coaches. Uh, and, and it's been, uh, it's been a roller coaster. Uh, it's, we, we've been able to do uh, some pretty cool things, but also, um, you know, there's been some setbacks and, 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 and getting the energy and, and all that kind of stuff. But, but at the same time, I mean, I, I, you can't, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I have an amazing leadership group that helps me, uh, you know, get the ball rolling and, and you know, uh, lead some, some pretty awesome projects that, that are in the works and, and, you know, awesome things coming our way for our group. Uh, but also, um, at the end of the day, it's, you know, comes down to really building relationships and all, that kind of stuff. Um, the only way I get people excited is by, you know, jumping on a call and, and, and having those conversations and, and asking them, like, how do they want to give back? Uh, just like, you know, was given to me. So um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's no racking at times because, um, you know, this past convention, uh, I went from being at the back of the row, you know, the rows to, to, you know, presenting <laughs> alongside two amazing coaches, but, um, but I want to do more. I, I, I'm looking forward to the next convention and, 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 you know, making sure that we have more presentations that, that are sponsored by the, you know, uh, advocacy group and, and not just for me to speak, but also for other coaches in our group to, to, you know, get, get themselves out there and, 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 um, use their voices for good. So, um, you know, I know it's just March, but I look forward to, to the next one. I love the fact that you've kind of like grown from being, like you said, the person that was in the crowd to this year being up front and what have you, what, and, and maybe it's, it's family and heritage, but why, why the, the like direction of going to the Latino side of things and, and what kind of drew you to that? Um, and why do you seem like, as you said, so passionate and energetic about that? Um, well, I mean, for me, um, I was very fortunate that my high school coach um, looked like me, sounded like me, uh, spoke to me in Spanish. Like, you know, we can joke about anything and everything. And, and we had that cultural, you know, uh, piece to it, right? Um, as I got more into coaching and, and, and that kind of stuff, I, I rarely saw other coaches that look like me on the other side, right? And, and I rarely saw, uh, you know, even worse Latina coaches <laughs> um and and yes some of it is you know regional and and where you live and all that kind of stuff makes sense but the twin cities is massive right when i started so we're seeing more of so for me it's, that's that's what i want to make sure that not only the coaches but also the players can, can see themselves and, and, and those leaders. Um, and, and I think, I, again, it, it goes back to that, that experience. I want to make sure that anybody that is on a soccer team, either as a player or the coach, um, has opportunities to, to leave their mark, leave their mark on, 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 on the game, uh, can uh, make a difference. And, and, and you know, I, I know, as like I said, I have a Latino advocacy group leadership that have done remarkable things. So I, I want them up front and center, um, you know, making a difference and, and, and leading the way and where, where, where soccer is going to look like and, and be like in 80, 100 years. But it takes work. <laughs> and, and right now, um, I, I get paid to be around soccer fields. Um, yes, it's daunting at times. Um, you know, as a director, I do have to answer to some interesting emails, but I have time and I have the energy. I, you know, you said it, I'm 31. <laughs> I don't know that I'll be doing this when I'm 60. Um, so uh, in order for change to happen, um, if this is the, the way I can do it, 
I want to make sure that I I get back uh, to to the game that you know it's allowed me to get on a call like this tonight <laughs> and and talk about my experience. So uh, I want more coaches to to have that and experience it. Um, and and if you know if it takes some alien calls, let's do it. Um, I'm I'm open to that. The one thing that I love about is you talked about, I want to be a head coach or a director by 35. Um, now you're the, ch the chairperson for this advocacy group. Has leadership been just something that's been ingrained in you? Was it like, were you, like parents in those types of things? Or have you always, because you seem like you're one of those that I want to leave a mark. I want to take on challenges. I want to grow, but I want, I, you tend to end up at the front. You're leading the pack. Is that something that you've always just been kind of, that's who you are, or is there something to that? Well, I mean, it, it's, I mean, I think leadership, it's, it's one day at a time, right? Um, it, it, for me, it's always been like, can I just have conversations? Can I just build relationships with people how, and, and, you know, see I, how I can help? That's where it's kind of, had kind of where I'm at and, and kind of where I've gone to. Um, but every single mentor that I've ever had, every coach that I ever had, um, player, you know, players that I've had, it's like, how can you make a difference? And in that, you know, in that place, how can they help you become, a, you know, better communicator, <laughs> um, you know, better leader, uh, better listener, you know, those kind of things. So uh, I know when when I reached out to be part of the Latino advocacy, it wasn't because I knew what was going on or how we were going to get it done. It was um, how can I help? And then let's see what I learned in that process. So, um, and, and then again, when I was given the chance to be the chairperson, it wasn't because I knew everything. It was, okay, this this is the new challenge. Let's see um, how I can just become a, a, a little bit stronger a leader as we go. Um, I am a very different coach <laughs> from when I started to to now, and I hope that in this journey that I'm a better coach and a better leader 20, 30 years from now. Um, it's all about just that learning process and 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 taking it one at a time. I don't know that um, my family ever kind of told me I've been a leader, but I, I'll probably would say that I've asked questions. <laughs> and, and I hope that um, that's, you know, I, I, the best way to, to describe <laughs> that, that, that learning process for me. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I, there's so much room for, for growth and improvement. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a finished product yet. So I love that. That's a sweet little saying. I'm not a finished product. Where when you decided to go into the coaching side, like all full on, what did your family think? What did parents were they did they like were they supportive or they like, oh, I don't know if this is a good idea? Or I mean, how have they enjoyed watching you go from that coach that you say I'm a, a different coach now? What has that experience been to share it with like your family? Like you're now back in that area close to family and friends? I I would say that my parents have probably um, question uh, <laughs> why this. Um, and but but at the end of the day, they at least in my face. Uh, <laughs> hey, if that's what you want to do, all right, go do it. Uh, again, just make sure that, you know, you are live within your means and, and that kind of stuff and, and make sure that, you know, uh, you're, you're saving for the future. And, and, but, but at the end of the day, they also said like, Hey, if, if, if you ever need help and, and that kind of stuff, they'll, they'll help me out. They will let me know how they feel. Absolutely. But they will help me out. Um, I'm also, my, you know, my wife also is very supportive of, of this journey and, you know, moving to Colorado and then moving back and all right okay we'll figure it out you know and, and whatever that next next opportunity is um it's I you can only do coaching or or any type of leadership uh role in, in soccer 
because you have people that um, are willing to to support, listen, and you know, just be on a sounding board. I mean, I I know if you ask my wife, after I have complained about a lot of things, <laughs> not you know from from a game that didn't go well or a conversation I had with you know family that I I wish I could have done better, um, but. At the end of the day, support support is important, uh, and and I guess it's for anything you do. But but for coaching, it, it can be a lonely, you know, lonely uh, road sometimes. Uh, and 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 again, I I, I think that I'm um, only in this position uh, at 31 because I I have found people, not only with my family but also uh, a coaching network that's been very supportive and and. And, and understanding and, and willing to share their experience and, and, and you know, uh, answer questions and that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but it was, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been a journey. And, and, and I think, again, uh, for those listening, uh, find those people. Find those people that just, you know, you, even if they think you're crazy, uh, to, to your face will say, all right, okay, how, how are we going to get this done? And, and, or this has been my experience and, and it might not be yours, but keep this in mind. And, 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 and the people that champion you are, you know, well, 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 again, still think you're crazy, but at the end of the day, um, you're not doing this alone. It's, it's, I, I don't know, maybe miserable, but I am very, very fortunate to, to have uh, surrounded myself by, by amazing people. Uh, that uh, just let me do what I want to do, uh, and that's that's important. I really have a large respect for coaches, and you brought it up that they're that especially those with wives. It's a huge kind of uh, like they have to give up quite a bit because you're gone a lot, and then like you said, it's hard not to sometimes bring the game with you into the house. Um, and they have to listen to it. But the fact that she followed you to Colorado and then back to here um, speaks volumes. Um, and I love the fact that you recognize um, that as well. The other thing I wanted to get from you, so you have, you're in the midst of doing some club stuff and you're also doing the college. Do you enjoy one more than the other? Uh, what's maybe like a pro or a con of like club? Like you love it, but you miss this that, that you can get at college. And what do you love with college? But Maybe you miss with club, or if you go pick one, which which way would you go? Um, so, like I said, I get myself to thirty five or one or the other because um, what I what I appreciate about college is that it's it's performance. It's you know you you got to compete at the best possible level you can, um, and 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 you want to make sure that the players get those opportunities to either showcase themselves or um, you know, or f- just finish finish the potential person they're gonna be right. That you know those life lessons that they might not get in the classroom. You know, teamwork, responsibility, um, time management, <laughs> uh, how to advocate for themselves, um, and and that kind of thing. Not not I'm not saying that it doesn't happen in the classroom, but a lot of the times is you know study for this, take a test on that. And then, oh yeah, by the way, uh, make sure you memorize this, right? Uh, but, but in a college soccer environment, all right, you know, if you're a captain, these are your responsibilities. If you're a goalkeeper, how can you do this and, and that kind of stuff? And, and oh, and, and don't forget that, that you earn this opportunity in the classroom, not, not in the soccer field. Uh, if you, you can be the top goal scorer in the conference, if you don't have your grades, man, you, you can't be here, <laughs> right? So it's, it's that, I, I guess I appreciate the dance of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the youth system, it's, it's where you leave your mark, right? Getting those, I'm in that 11 to 14 boys. Uh, that's the age where we came from rack to, yes, maybe we we done competitor for a couple of years. Um but this is where now I'm going to start becoming a goalkeeper or a forward or a defender. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to try all of them from 11 to 13 to 14. 
um, and and find my place on, on, on you know not only the eleven but also uh, up to you know number eighteen in the team and and how do you shape those you know the skills for the littles but also start sprinkling in that tactical piece of the game um, and and again same thing you still have to use soccer to teach them some type of life lesson um so i i guess i appreciate that both of you both both games ask different things of myself uh, as a leader but also as an assistant and 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 you know uh and it's on me to to bring you know, the crazy way I do things into that mix, right? Into those um, environments. Um, and, and again, um, building those relationships, not only with the players, but with families and and get, getting them to understand, you know, what the Tanka way is or what, you know, Bethany Lutheran uh, way of playing is um, and, and how they fit um, and, and how they can leave their mark. Uh, in that process, so um, this is it's fun. It's never it's never the same day. Um, uh, no matter no matter which you know what I'm doing that day, and then you know the days where you know come from one training session with with my 2010s into okay now I have to go talk to this you know 19 20 year old doing some interesting life choices. Uh, <laughs> And, and, oh yeah, you know, we still have to have a training session in that. So uh, it's, that, that's what I appreciate. Um, and, and, and I guess the reverse of that, that can also be the kind of it, right? Having those, those conversations of like, all right, was that a right idea? Was that the best thing you could have been doing and, and those kind of things. But um, it's, it's fun, uh, it's challenging. Um, and, and again, I, you know, I have a, a wife and a family that supports that crazy, crazy roller coaster. So uh, I'm just gonna keep doing it as, as long as I, until I have to choose one or the other. Uh, but right now I'm just gonna prolong that as much as I can. Uh, but uh, it's, it's fun. I, as much as I, I complain, I, I do, uh, I, I know why I do it. And, and it's, it's that, that thrill of, of just figuring it out <laughs> so you've talked about too kind of the the 35 kind of sound sounds like that's that number um do you see yourself when you get there because you, you you seem to just have this passion for soccer and like making an impact like even the opportunity to work with younger players and make an impact but you know you can do that with the older at the college level and stuff do you think you could see that number kind of pushing its way and then and where you like maybe you say you know what i'm just going to keep sticking it out i'm going to rock and roll um but is like ultimately is the the head coaching and director thing is that what your ultimate like that's the the cream of the crop that we're going for yeah no i i i want to believe that i'm a proactive uh type of person that i i set myself those those timelines, because I went to college and I know I procrastinate. If I, if you tell me that it's due whenever I want to get it done, it's, it's going to take a while. <laughs> but, um, but if, if I say like, hey, June, I have to know this, this, or that, you know, it gets me to, to work. Um, so for me at 35, it might not be where, you know, I, I'm a head coach at the college level or I'm, or I'm the person, the deep director of coaching at, at a club. But it might be where it's like, okay, um, I, I, this, is, this is the next challenge, right? Um, and, 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 you know, it might be, okay, can you become a coaching educator? Can you go from, uh, you know, hopefully and this this age group director that I have can can I impact the next set of coaches coming through our system that that make an impact on their players in a you know um 21st century uh you know um 
the up-to-date uh, best practices. Um, so, so I, you know, I, I hope that by 35, I'm evolved into that next thing. And, and, and if that's through coaching education, if that's through life experience or, or what have you, um, I, I don't want to be grinding it out anymore. I don't want to feel like I am. Uh, I want to, I want to feel like, yeah, this, you know, this is next because I, I have the experience and I have the the mentors that um that allow me to to be able to do that next next challenge right um that's that's how i'm gonna approach it um you know i turned 32 in september so <laughs> so so i better start figuring it out now um uh, but but i think uh by, by setting that that timeline it's been more of get to it you know, make make those calls, you know, make those relationships, build those relationships so that um, you keep learning, keep growing, and, and, and you're ready for, for that next next challenge. I love the fact it's almost like the convention sitting to go and presenter, how you said, you know, maybe the coaching, like you said, it is a grind, you're getting after it, but there are other ways that you can grow as a coach you can impact and the fact that you're like now you've taught even mentioned like maybe i do something that impacts the coaches within my club that i'm working with now and i can grow that um and then of course this you know you're part of the advocacy group the latino side of things and the other thing that keeps jumping out is you're you like to have a lot going on have you always been kind of a doer of like you even talked about the procrastination type thing is that because you're always just kind of like I'm going to do a little bit of here. I'm going to do this. Oh, I'd like to try that too. Have you always been uh, like, even as a youth and growing up, one of those who just was, I'm into everything. You even talked about asking lots of questions, kind of a curious George type of, I'm always asking my parents questions and stuff. Um, so it, it sounds like you're constantly kind of like, if I'm not doing this, I've already got something else to do. When I'm done with that, I'll move and keep doing this. Does that sound to kind of fit your personality? Yeah, for the most part, um, you know, um, I, I think there's, you know, go get your licenses, right? There's that path of learning, but there's more to just the X and L's. You, you have to um, bring other aspects of, you know, either from other sports or from arts, music, whatever, right? Like bring, bring your personality into coaching. Um, I like to dance. I like to, uh, I'm not a very good, Good artist, so I'm not gonna put that in. But uh, just coach soccer. Um, you know, you you go to connect with your players, with your coaches on on the things that they like to do. So, um, so I guess that's where you know, be active and 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 go do all these other things can can shape you into becoming a, a well-rounded individual. Um, I also know that I can just sit and not do anything <laughs> if you give me that if you give me that time and space so um you know that yeah I, I think it's 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 that learning and growing and and um and just more like understanding that there's more to just soccer in life yes I can be at the soccer fields all day yes I can talk to you about soccer um but but we're finding out that our players are not the players that they were 10 years ago. Uh, we're also finding out that our coaching staffs that are younger are not the, you know, coaching staffs that, that we're used to. <laughs> uh, so it's either evolve and, and, and keep up with the times or, you know, go find something else because, you know, old way of doing things might not be a good fit. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm saying it might not. So I guess to, to your answer, you know, to answer the question is, yeah, I have to, I have to know about something else or else, you know, I'm going to lose it. Uh, because uh, if I'm, if soccer is the only thing I, I got going for me, it's going to, it's going to get tough. <laughs> if, and I've loved this, this is, it's so cool. This is all the little things that you've got going on. 
um, and I'm excited to kind of watch these next three or four years to kind of see what the next kind of the fork in the road that comes up. Um, if others want to connect with you, um, maybe find out how they can be involved with the, um, you know, the advocacy group or just kind of, you know, bounce things off you because you've talked about networking, building relationships, how are ways that they can connect with you and kind of follow you at the college level and the club and all those types of things? Um, so I just got into Twitter. I've had it for a while, but I just got into Twitter. Um, I said for a long time that, you know, I, I like Facebook because, you know, you can put the pictures and all that kind of stuff and Instagram, but that's it. That, so, uh, I'm, you know, I guess my point is social media <laughs> is one. Uh, obviously, I will share my email with you guys and you guys can, again, anybody that wants to have a conversation about pretty much anything. Uh, if I can keep up, you know, let's do it. Um, the other thing, uh, I know that I'm the chairperson for the Latino Advocacy Group, but United Soccer Coaches has um, plenty of advocacy groups that you guys can be a part of. I can connect you with those, no problem. Uh, the chairpersons for, for all those are amazing people. I actually was on a call with them just you know a couple hours ago uh, on some exciting things coming the way uh, of the advocacy groups. So you know, please uh, reach out. I will connect you with, with those people um, or just go to United Circuit Coaches Advocacy Group and, and you'll be able to see, see those leaders. And, and, and I guess my point is get, get connected, reach out. Um, I know, I know that it's daunting to, you know, send an send a email, especially if you don't know the person. <laughs> um, but, but those that respond are the ones that want to make sure that the game continues to grow, continues to get better, continues to welcome new voices and, and new ideas. Um, and those are the people that you want to be around with. So um, it might take, you know, more than 24 hours to get that response, but, but when it gets back, trust me, um, you, you will, you will, you know, you will learn something. Um, so, um, but yeah, no, I, I'm always welcome to, you know, to just build on our, another relationship, not so much for what you might get, get out of it, but um, again, how can you make sure that uh, you leave an impact on, on, on the game? And it's not just on the field. It's, it's really sometimes just uh, connecting people with, with those that might be able to answer their questions or um, you know, open the gates a little bit more uh to to make sure that um whatever your background might be um more than likely we have we have that in those players we have that in those families uh, so um let's make sure that the the those players those families have leaders that sound like them uh look like them and and understand their you know where they're coming from so um it might be a globalist idea <laughs> but but you know it's it's really how do we make our communities uh just just a little bit closer uh, to, to make sure that um everybody feels seen um uh, and, and and heard and, and that's important that is a perfect way to end this chat this has been awesome i'm gonna shut this down this is karen with coaches corner chats with mauricio lazada and I'm out. Peace.